we immediately turned our backs to the mirror and faced the spinner of tails. Alice. Even now, the spinner of tails called me by my character's name in the tale. I braced myself. Joker extended his arm out before me to keep me back. He then told me quietly, Don't worry, Emily. I can tell just by looking at him. He doesn't have much magic left. Emily, you got your memories back while being Alice, the tale's protagonist. And you decided to return to the real world. You basically flat out rejected his tale. Now that he mentioned it, Joker did predict it. His deduction suggested that the rules of Wonderland had been distorted since I got my memories back. For the spinner of tales, losing his tail and its protagonist meant losing himself. <sighs> the spinner of tales did not answer. If he weren't in a position to deny it, then Joker was right. He exhausted his magic. Let's go, Amelie. The spinner of tales can no longer get in our way. We held hands and faced the mirror, turning our backs to the spinner of tales. However... Alice, wait. A heart-rending, sorrowful voice followed. I turned around, unable to take the plunge into the mirror. Amelie? Joker's expression was overcome with bewilderment as he called out my name. <sighs> I averted my gaze from the spinner of tails and looked at Joker, who was by my side. I knew that Joker would be able to understand everything if he saw the look in my eyes. And sure enough, he cracked a wry smile as if he knew, and he shrugged his shoulders. Uh, yeah, alright. The words that flowed off his lips were neither out of anger nor impatience. He was calm and quiet. Joker had already decided that he would spend the rest of his life with me. Amelie, just do whatever you think is right. I'll be there for you no matter what. Thank you, Joker. Joker lovingly supported me, his smile brimming with his deep trust in me. That was why I confronted the Spinner of Tales once again. There's something that's been on my mind. <laughs> I continued as the Spinner of Tales remained silent. After I woke up in Wonderland, here, I ended up going to Luke's tea party. But after that, I was sent to a completely different place before even realizing it. Apparently, there weren't many people who could use teleportation spells. So I always wondered who used that teleportation spell on me and why. And was it mere coincidence that I fell from above and landed on Joker? The possibility drifted through my head after I got my memories back at the Lake of Tears. I asked the Spinner of Tales, were you the one who was behind all of that? Huh? Joker opened his eyes slightly wide as if he were surprised by my speculation. However, he spoke no words. He let me take care of everything as he watched over. <laughs> the Spinner of Tales did not respond to my query. However, it did not stop me from pressing on, because I was now sure of it. Before you sealed my memories, you said you would make sure that Joker and I would meet again. But Joker and I didn't even know that we previously met, for we had lost our memories. Thereupon, the Spinner of Tales muttered a few words. As the spinner of tales, I couldn't bear such a boring tale. His face was buried in the hood, making it impossible to see his expression. Everything went well at first, but it was supposed to be your long-awaited reunion. Think of how boring it would be if you two just said hello while passing by, and that was it. I just wanted to give the characters in my tale more opportunities to face each other. That doesn't make sense. In a quiet voice, I strongly rejected his reasoning. Because your tale, which you love more than anything, rules over all of Wonderland. The encounter with Joker was something that meant a lot in Amelie's life. But it had nothing to do with Alice. If you were trying to create a tale with Alice as the protagonist, then, 
there would be no reason for you to give us a chance to reunite, right? I knew that the Spinner of Tales understood what I was saying, but he remained silent. When I thought about how frail his voice was, it became clear that he no longer had the strength to reply. I silently pondered to myself. The Spinner of Tales isn't just some cruel human being. I gazed into the darkness under his hood and put my doubts into words. The reason why you made leaving Wonderland a serious crime and why you wanted to trap Alice in this story was because you were lonely, like me. Perhaps he wanted to keep everyone in the tale of Wonderland. The spinner of tales wasn't a perfect figure. He was a sensitive, lonely person. It was hard not to think that way. The spinner of tales did not confirm or deny my claims. There no longer was a sign of him attacking us. I still have something I need to tell you. I took a step forward and grabbed the Spinner of Tales hand. Thank you for bringing us together. <sighs> the Spinner of Tales seemed like he wanted to say something. In the wake of a breathtaking presence, his body slowly vanished. Without a trace. Amelie. Joker called out my name and gently wrapped his arms around me from behind. I was fortunate to encounter the one I love because of a tale called Wonderland. Amelie, if he was the one responsible for giving me a chance to reunite with you, then I'd have to thank him. He whispered in a deep, calm voice. His breaths tickled my ear. I cannot forget the time I lived governed by the rules of Wonderland. I'm sure the residents of Wonderland have mixed feelings about the Spinner of Tales as well. However, I think I can forgive him. Joker. I spun around and faced Joker, gazing right into his rose-colored eyes. I'm so happy that we feel the same way. I love you, Joker. I stood on my toes and gave him a kiss on the cheek. <laughs> you took the words right out of my mouth. Joker cheerfully smiled wrapping his arms around my back and hugging me. Amelie, you were the only one who was aware of how he really felt. I'm sure your words gave him the comfort he had been searching for all this time. I hope so. I muttered with feelings of hope, wrapping my arms around him. Why don't we call it a day? I put my pen down and gazed at the words I had just written. Joker and I returned to the real world together. Even though the Spinner of Tales had vanished, the mirror connecting our worlds remained. I was now living with Joker. I still felt lonely without my parents, but I could keep my chin up as long as he was by my side. Being back in the real world didn't feel real. I was getting used to my life in Wonderland. It almost felt as if this were the dream world and I was having an out-of-body experience. But I continued to move on with my life. I still haven't gotten all of my memories back that I lost in Wonderland. Though, I feel they're coming back to me quicker ever since I've been back. It wouldn't take long before I got used to my life here. I'm home. It was right when I was preparing dinner. I heard his voice, stopped everything I was doing, and rushed into the living room. Welcome home, Joker! Joker joyfully smiled at me as I greeted him at the door. He was now dressing in clothes from this world. His clothes in Wonderland looked really good on him, but these looked great as well. But there was no way I was going to admit that to him. Hmm? Hey, what's in the envelope? There was a rather thick envelope in his hand. I curiously asked him about it, for I had no idea where it could have come from. Oh, this? It was given to me. He casually said as he handed me the envelope. Hmm? Puzzled, I opened the envelope, only to be puzzled even more. Ah! Uh, this is money! The envelope was stuffed with bills. It was, of course, genuine money from this world. It's compensation for the work I did. You were working today? 
The questions only piled up with each and every word Joker uttered. He was always full of mystery and really knew how to surprise people. I was performing a few magic tricks on the side of a busy street, and apparently I impressed a lot of people. I was even asked if I wanted to perform on a show. They said they played on TV too. <sighs> I was amazed in every sense of the word. He got used to this world way too quickly, and he had already found work. Hey, Joker, you're not tricking anyone, right? Don't worry, Amelie. I'm a new man. Okay, but I've got my eye on you. I nervously giggled for a moment, but almost immediately recollected myself. Anyway, go ahead and take the first shower. I'll have dinner ready by the time you get out. Alright, now fill you in on the details over dinner. He said as he leaned forward and gave me a peck on the temple. After he swiftly made his way to the shower, I hurried to finish dinner so that I wouldn't keep him waiting. Joker loved my cooking, and we ended up having an enjoyable meal together. After doing the dishes, we were relaxing on the living room sofa until Joker brought up what had been on his mind. So, Amelie, in order for us to live a happy life together, we first need enough money to support ourselves, right? Now I can use a bit of my magic in this world, but not enough to get too excited about. And I thought I'd try something I'm good at to see if I can make some money, and fortunately, it worked. Joker. He was seriously thinking about our future, and he found a way to live on his own in this world. I could just feel how much he cared about me, and I felt warm inside. I mean, I'm doing this to make you happy. I'd do anything for you. Thank you, Joker. I expressed my gratitude, even if he said it half-jokingly. I'm so happy. I had no idea you were thinking about our future that seriously already. Huh? I was looking up at the ceiling all of a sudden. A few seconds went by before I realized what happened. Joker had randomly pushed me down onto the sofa while I was speaking. And that, apparently, wasn't enough. May I ask what you are doing? I was captivated by him as he tore my clothing off. If you really are my beloved Amelie, you should know what I want to do now. What's dinner without dessert? His voice and smile were sweeter than any dessert I'd ever seen. I furrowed and put my foot down before I allowed myself to be carried away by the mood. Joker, what a way to kill the mood. We were having a moment just now, you know? It would have been more romantic if you'd restrain yourself a little. We would have started to passionately gaze into each other's eyes. And would we have ended up cuddling or sharing a sweet kiss? If we did things like that, would we have naturally taken things to the bedroom? <laughs> what? You'd prefer it a little more romantic? It'd at least be a lot better than what you just did. I really care about you. And you feel the same way about me, right? Would it be too selfish or naive to ask you to make it a little more romantic? I asked, peeping at him from beneath. Joker let out a small sigh. <sighs> Unfortunately for me, I'd do anything if it's you that asks me. I'm sorry I couldn't make your maidenly dream come true. I should have at least brought you back a rose bouquet when I came home. He sounded like he felt really bad for what he did, but he didn't look like he was going to budge. Mm -hmm. yeah. We went back and forth for a while, exchanging aggressive glances, but his eyes soon grew more serious. I'm sorry, but I just don't have it in me to be absolutely perfect. So, which is it going to be? Should I have you on the sofa now, or sneak into your bed at night? Those aren't the most diverse of options, are they? I gazed back into his eyes and asked, So are you telling me that this was your best, after waiting for what you believe to be the right moment? You didn't notice. I was trying to remain calm as long as possible until we took care of our initial problems. You should have told me so. I instinctively let out an awkward giggle, causing Joker to crease his eyes and passionately grin. What did you want me to say? You wanted me to say that I couldn't resist your charm. 
and that I could barely control myself. <laughs> I'd look pathetic. Uh, his sweet whisper sent my heart racing. You, you, you really felt that way? I asked as I looked back into his eyes, slightly worried that he might notice the pounding of my heart. To tell the truth, I wanted you ever since I pulled you out that night from the Lake of Tears. <clears throat> my cheeks were splashed with crimson as I thought back to that night. But you were exhausted both physically and mentally, so I couldn't do that to you. And I've been waiting for my chance to share our love for one another ever since. But Amelie, <laughs> you still look tired. His rose eyes mischievously creased as he looked deep into mine, as if he could see right into my heart. There was no way I wouldn't have realized it as he gazed into my eyes, no matter how beautiful a rose bouquet can be. Nothing but his rosy eyes would bring me this much happiness and make me feel this way. I'm not tired. I was waiting for this moment too. I wasn't even trying to hide my blushing cheeks. I just reached out to wrap my arms around the man I love. I love you. There were so many thoughts and feelings bundled into his faint, heated voice. He stole my lips away, as if he couldn't wait another second. Mm. Burning, passionate kisses. He traced his finger through my hair, down my cheek, across my neck. His deep, aggressive kisses erased whatever rationale I had left. I had been waiting for this moment just like you were, Joker. I realized how I felt as he touched me. I always wanted to feel Joker, the man I love. Everywhere he touched was on fire, burning through my skin. And yet, it felt so unbelievably good. <laughs> Normally. He whispered my name as his lips passionately brushed against mine. He desired me more than anything as we endlessly exchanged affectionate, heated kisses. He eventually undressed me, our skin met for the first time. I was so happy that he told me everything on his mind. How I wanted to know him now was through his skin, without even exchanging words. I surrendered myself to the one I loved. I slowly opened my eyes after getting a good night's sleep. Joker? I immediately wondered where he was. We moved from the sofa into the bedroom last night and shared the same bed. I soon found him lying right next to me. Hmm? It was like a bolt of lightning hit me, suddenly bringing me to my senses. Because Joker had the book I was writing in his hands. J Joker? Give that back! I sat up in a fluster and tried swiping the book out from his hand. Joker glanced over at me with his rose-colored eyes and teased me. Judging by your reaction, it looks like I was right. So you wrote this, huh? Uh, he guessed it right. The best place to hide a leaf was the forest. So I thought the bookshelf would be the best place to hide my book. I'm an idiot. Joker was probably looking for something to do this morning, and that book caught his attention. I was the one who put it on the bookshelf, so I couldn't possibly blame him. It was very interesting. I felt like I got to see another side of you, Amelie. <sighs> My cheeks burned in utter embarrassment. I was hit with a strike of embarrassment, far different from how I felt last night. Because what was written in that book was... Everything that I experienced in Wonderland. It was painfully obvious that I was the author of the book. So, Amelie, why did you start writing this tale? I, I don't really know how to put it. I decided to come clean, even though my cheeks felt like they were on fire. I wanted to do this for the spinner of tales, even if it's not much. I'm sure he loved the world of the tale in his own way. I see. Joker affectionately gazed into my eyes and gently stroked my hair. Amelie, I know you can do it. Really? <laughs> really. He confidently smiled at me. As long as we don't forget about Wonderland while continuing our tale. I'm sure it would make him really happy. His voice had a mysterious charm 
but was almost magic. It was like, if Joker was that certain, then I was sure of it. I don't plan on letting this tale finish for the rest of my life, I vowed. Let's write a tale of happiness together that never ends. Joker smiled and gently kissed me. Even though it was such a light, pecking kiss, I couldn't stop my love for him from overflowing. When I held Joker in my arms, he pushed me down onto the bed as if he'd been waiting for this moment. Even though I had just woken up, we once again buried ourselves under the blanket. Filling me with thoughts of our endless tale together. A tale of courage, love, and hope. Above all, a tale of happiness, together until our very last breath.